good uh, way to start. Um, can, I, uh, can I welcome everybody uh, to the this report meeting of the Liverpool uh, City Region Combined Authority. Good to see everybody. Um, before getting into the agenda, can I just uh, remind people of a few housekeeping uh, items? Can I ask everybody to either turn off their mobile phones or please keep them on silent for the duration of the meeting? And can I ask uh, that members and those presenting reports use the microphones? And uh, finally, uh, as uh, last time, the meeting is going to be filmed by officers from the Combined Authority and available on the Mosley <coughs> Council YouTube channel later today. So just, that's just for, for information. Okay, so uh, straight into the agenda. Uh, item one is apologies for absence. Are there any apologies? Declarations of interest. Uh, can I ask, have any declarations of interest been received? No. Okay, thank you. Uh, item three uh, are the minutes of the, the last meeting held on the 19th of September. Uh, pages one to eight of your agenda pack. Uh, can I ask, are these approved as a correct record of the meeting? Agreed? Thank you very much. Okay, on to item four, one more. Uh, October update. This is our first substantive item, and I'm going to ask David Brown to speak to this. David. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, we need to update members with progress on one more development. Um, we will report on that um, and the communication of the high speed to the Court of this year. Um, more forests did not get together to publish a report um, earlier in the summer, uh, which highlighted the importance of. Thank you. 
really has uh, continued to be high as possible. So it's something that uh, decision makers, as Joe alluded yeah. to, want the chance of uh, are taken to ignore. So a good and positive um, stage in terms of the meeting, but there are also more detailed things we need to crack on. Ian. then on to uh, item five, the rail devolution update. And David, can you yeah. take us through this, please? The rail devolution, this is uh, related to not infrastructure, but related to train services that are provided by Northern and Trans Pennine. Uh, they're under a franchise which uh, expired in February 2016, and the franchise went through to um, put in place uh, from that point forward for between seven and ten years. Uh, members of Reed, um, with the effectiveness of previously, which looks at um, how the North uh, has a greater role in those franchises, which are currently met by the Secretary of State. Uh, there are three pieces of work that have been ongoing. The first is uh, the governance of how Rail right North, which is the working title for the local transport authorities in the North. So there are 30 local transport authorities that have actually come together, creating an association, and have now got an incorporated company called Rail North Limited, and that will represent all of the 30 local transport authorities and um, Council Robinson is the representative on that body of the Liverpool City Region. Uh, by the end of this calendar year, um, that's, that whole Pan Northern uh, Rail North organisation will be in place and all of the local transport authorities will have indicated they join uh, that body. We have a political government structure which keeps us in level uh, the infrastructure elected mayors and uh, the political oversight body. Um, the second element is
northern and trans Pennine franchises will be managed, commercially managed by Rail North in the north of England, so there's no outer crossing that's going to the north of England. And the partnership agreement has a legally uh, binding uh, underpinning nature, which if Rail North could reach a ballistic capacity during the franchise period, could take a greater responsibility for future franchises moving forward. It's a significant step uh, in devolution of the ability to manage the franchise. The third element is the specifications, so the content of those franchises uh, for both Trans Pennine and Northern. Uh, the shortlist is uh, a bit of something that's highlighted in section 3.9, and the formal procurement process is due to sign in December where the specifications for those franchises will be made We've been working very closely with the Department of Transport in making sure that the economic importance of trains uh, in the North of England has been reflected in those specifications, and I believe that we've had a very positive on that specification, really stressing the economic importance of good rail services into and out of uh, the northern cities and towns. The specification is due to the community of transport commission in the middle of December and the formal procurement process will take place. And we've highlighted in the report some of the, some of the issues that have been raised relating to uh, ticketing and fares, uh, particular emphasis around investment in rolling stock, uh, so investment in rolling stock of northern trains uh, on city lines that are further from the city region, but also across Manchester and Leeds, and that's a very important. To make those points, we uh, believe that they will be encapsulated in the specification, uh, and we believe that Rail North, both now but also in its formally incorporated position, uh, will continue to have a greater role in those rail services and influencing the specification as they move forward. So we're looking for uh, members to endorse that work, but also support the continued development of that work, and continue to stress uh, politically of investment in things like rolling stock uh, on local rail services in the Thanks, David. Uh, comments, questions? Robert? Thank you, Robert. Yeah, just a brief one thing, actually. It really important that if we look at the rights of property in the market, Robert, by the various current franchise holders, do you have any uh, direction to give us in, in response to those inquiries? Uh, yeah, we've uh, produced a brief note which summarises all of the requirements that we believe we've got from our long-term rail strategy for all those services that will be outlined again next week. We'll send that with all to all stakeholders because you will all, all of these bidders will try and see all of the local authorities, local enterprise partners, etc. So I will, we've produced a very, very brief summary of the key things that we believe that are important for the full city region. We'll come back again next week so you can make your own Any other points? Uh, I mean, uh, can I just say, I mean, I think this is, this uh, piece of work looks as though it's making good progress. Um, I think this this model is possibly um, uh, a good model for, you know, devolution and other policy areas, which, which need to be looked at in the context of the debate that is going on at the moment. Um, and, you know, I, I think looking at the uh, progress that's been made, we, we are likely to have a a much greater say over um, the specification for these services, uh, which hopefully will, will benefit our city region and the other city regions in, in the partnership. Uh, so I've been really asking colleagues, can we agree recommendations on page 13, section two, they agree? Okay, thank you. Okay, that takes us on to item six, which is the freight and logistics hub update. Jeff? Thank you, Jeff. Uh, this report just um, updates on the outcome of the interregion growth deal and uh, reports on the success of a number of projects uh, in that uh, section of the report. And highlights also in section 4 the potential reported impact of uh, the freight and logistics hub, which picks up uh, many of the points that were made uh, earlier in the uh, previous chat. I should just um, point out a tack up uh, on.
in that context, the delivery uh, schemes are, are vital. You've got just as much information to make sure that it is equally important. Uh, that will be an important discussion item at our next board meeting next week. I just want to emphasize delivery of these schemes is important to identify them in the first place. And we ask you to do that. I've got the resources in place for that to happen. But that will play so hard in ensuring that the structure is in place as far as we can. It does need to Participation to make sure that all structures are there. And these things happen all the time. So we want to be thinking about that data on the library column. Chair, do you want to respond to that? Sir? Uh, lead a program uh, 
partly on the next slide, so around the uh, sort of the lessons from the skill show, which we'll come on to in a minute. But yeah, okay, uh, good points. Any any other comments, Robert? I can just ask Mark one question, Chair. Mark, in practice, what would you like to see happen now? This is a very useful thing for physicians as well, in case of the immediate way forward. But in practice, I might ask, what do you think would be helpful? Thank you. 